This is 7 News. Tonight, the United States in shock after a gunman murders 20 children and six adults at a primary school. I was in the gym and I heard a loud, well, I heard like seven loud booms. The president fights back tears as he informs the American people about the tragedy. Beautiful little kids between the ages of five and ten years old. Americans ask why as the fight over gun laws heats up. Evil visited this community today. From the studios of 7 Perth, Emmy Kavansky. Good evening. America is tonight trying to understand the reasons behind one of the country's worst school massacres, with 20 children and six adults killed. It happened at the Sandy Hook Elementary School in Newtown, Connecticut, when a 20-year-old gunman got through electronic security and opened fire in two rooms. Mike Amor is in Newtown, Connecticut, where the reality of the loss is hitting the community hard. Emmy, I think the governor of this state said it best when he said evil had visited this community. This is small-town America, which had proudly boasted of being one of the safest in the country. Sadly, they can't say that any longer. This town is in deep shock, deep mourning, as you'd expect. They already held a very small memorial service in the main street tonight. And the local firehouse, it was meant to start selling Christmas trees tonight. Instead, paramedics from that firehouse were among the first on the scene of the second worst massacre in modern U.S. history. And we're starting to learn details of how the killer got his guns. He had four of them. He left two in the car. They belonged to his mother, who, of course, he also killed. They were legally owned. And apparently, he was buzzed through the school security system because they knew him. His mother worked there. And police are trying to establish what set him off. They'll be analysing his writings, his social networking pages, looking for clues. His family say he was suffering from some sort of mental illness. And his brother, by the way, was initially wrongly identified as the killer. He had to close down his Facebook page after receiving messages of hate. Any way you look at this, Emmy, it doesn't make sense. As President Obama wiped away tears, he told the world his nation's heart is broken. But the question many are asking is why America continues to have such liberal gun laws after going through so many mass shooting tragedies. To other news now, and a pedestrian has died after he was hit by a bus in Coburn Central. It happened near the intersection of Belia Road and North Lake Road around 2 o'clock this afternoon. The man was rushed to hospital but died a short time later. Police will investigate whether the man failed to see the bus before he stepped out. The bus driver is helping police with their inquiries. A police car has crashed while heading under lights and sirens to an armed hold-up. As Alexis Donkin reports, it's the same intersection where a Dianella mother was killed when police slammed into her car during a police pursuit. Witnesses say the police van rolled several times. Inside, two officers, they walked away without injury. In the Hyundai Gets, a 70-year-old man left shaken. The details of how the crash unfolded are still being investigated, but police say the two officers were on their way to an armed hold-up in Mount Lawley. It was just before nine. Lights and sirens on. They approached the intersection of Alexander and Morley Drive. Police say the 70-year-old man didn't see police as he went through a green light. Police won't say what speed they were travelling at when they struck the other vehicle, but they did say they'd slowed down through the intersection. It's the same place 50-year-old mother Sharon de Cole was killed when a police car collided with her Corolla in April. Police were chasing a stolen car. Alexis Donkin, 7 News. Well, not long to wait now until the RAC Channel 7 Christmas pageant gets underway at 7.30 tonight. Chantelle Tui is in the city. Chantelle, how are the preparations going? Well, Emmy, the crowds and the excitement are certainly building here in the city. Now, the floats are being put into place, the costumes are on, and already there are thousands of people lining the streets. Now, it's not too late to get down here. You can jump on a bus, a train, or even the ferry. Now, Transperth has put on extra trains for tonight. And a reminder, the Mandurah line will leave from the Esplanade station. The Joondalup service will leave from Perth Underground. Now, this year, the pageant will start on St George's Terrace, turn right 
right onto William Street, right onto Wellington Street, down Barrick Street, back onto the terrace, and it will finish at Langley Park. Now, Emmy, this is the first time in five years the Christmas pageant has been held at night, and I can tell you that the weather conditions are very mild and it's just lovely down here. It's sure to be a magical evening. The pageant starts at 7.30. Emmy. Looking forward to it. Thanks for that, Chantelle. Stay with us here on 7 News. Still to come after the break, surf safety. More lifesavers on jet skis to patrol Perth beaches. And new advice for preventing food allergies. 7 News and the West Australian have teamed up to bring you the leading online news coverage for WA at thewest.com.au. A 26-year-old Belgian tourist is in a critical condition in hospital tonight after he fell six metres down a flight of stairs at a Fremantle backpackers. It happened around 5.30 this morning. It's believed the man had been out with his girlfriend and other friends. Police say the fall was an accident. There'll be more surf lifesavers out on jet skis this summer. The state government today announcing half a million dollars for 12 new jet skis over the next two years. The Premier hopes extra water patrols will boost swimmers' confidence after five fatal shark attacks in WA in 10 months. The new jet skis are fitted with rescue equipment and will be based at beaches from Fremantle to Mullaloo. Parents are being told to feed babies solids earlier as researchers try to pinpoint the cause of a food allergy epidemic. But some experts warn it could be dangerous if they haven't been tested for allergic reactions. Thanks for that, Chris. The weather's next and don't forget your tickets for Saturday Night Lotto. Local waters tomorrow, wind south to southeasterly at 15 to 20 knots, decreasing to about 10 knots in the morning, seas to 2 metres. So for Sunday, we're in for a warm but partly cloudy day tomorrow. Light winds with a top of 31 degrees. Looking ahead, sunny and 27 degrees for Monday. There'll be some rain about on Tuesday with isolated showers until late in the afternoon. But those showers will clear by Wednesday with the mercury peaking on Friday, a top of 36 degrees. And now it's time for Saturday Lotto. Good luck. That's all from the 7 News team for now. I'll have updates later, but we leave you now with pictures of the lighthouse to Leighton kite surfing race. Good night.